Hi, I'm Sandra and welcome to Cooking and Crafts. I have some wonderful things to share with you today, but before I give you a little sneak preview, I want to say thanks to the wonderful folks at the Varnell Community Center. The facility is absolutely wonderful and thank you so much for your great use. Uh, let me give you just a sneak preview of what we're going to do. We're going to talk about some vacation memories. How do you preserve them and how do you keep them at home so you and your family can enjoy them all the time? I have a wonderful cookie recipe. It is probably my most requested recipe that I have, and I'm going to share that with you. And then last, I have some really uh, simple and easy arts and crafts. So stay with me, and I'll be right back, and we'll get started. Hi, I'm Johnny Miller at your Western Sizzlin in Udawal, Tennessee and Dalton, Georgia, and I can tell you that infomercials work. We've been advertising monthly to reach our customers for over 17 years now, and I know that you can reach your customers as well. You can depend on Elliott Media to take care of all your advertising needs, and remember, Western Sizzlin, we're your family steakhouse. When you're in the market for a new or scratch and dent appliance, Langford Appliance is the place to come. We're a locally owned business for over 30 years serving this area. Don't let your dollars go out of town. When you buy your appliances from Langford, your money stays right here in Dalton. And you can always count on us for the best service after the sale. We have a large parts and service department for all your appliance repairs or plumbing and hot water needs. Come see us when you're in need of any appliance. That's Langford Appliance at 319 North Glenwood Avenue in Dalton. Hi, this is Sandra again, and welcome back to Cooking and Crafts. I have some great suggestions for vacation memories. You know, we all go on vacation and where we go with our family and we have a good time and then we bring home back all these things and then we don't know what to do with them or we don't know what, how to display them. Try not to keep them in a box somewhere in a drawer, uh, even though that is sentimental reasons. You want to sort of put them out where you can see them and your other family members can see them and friends can see them also when they come over. Let's start with this. I love a picture frame. I actually bought this for my mother. This is a digital one and you plug it up. And what I do is I take my pictures and I load them on a zip drive. That way I can have different vacation memories and uh, I can put them on there, plug them in and I can play them when family members come over. Or you can even take this to work with you or you can load it on your computer. But I like this because your whole family members can see it. And then um, those <clears throat> cold wintry days, when you went to the beach, you can get those photos out and look at it and it just sends you back to another time and you can enjoy those great memories with your family. So I highly suggest this because it's fantastic. I actually got this next idea from Brandon who's on the show with me here. Um, he gave me an idea about bringing home sand and seashells from the beach. You know, we all go, and this usually happens to me, I would bring home some seashells and they look like this. They're broken, they have holes in it, and then you bring them back and you think, oh my goodness, I brought this back, I, I, I got them off the beach, I washed them, and now I'm gonna have to throw them away because there's no good. Well, sometimes if you will bring some sand back, this is a huge container of sand, so you might not want to bring back as much as I did. But sometimes I just like to display this. Uh, I would advise you to put some kind of lid on your jar. <clears throat> that way, if you do turn it over, you don't have a lot of vacuuming to do afterwards. But you always want to bring home your seashells, and this is, like I said, a suggestion that I got from Brandon. Um, in your um, container, you could have a Ziploc bag, you could have a Tupperware container, whatever you have left over from your vacation or whatever you have with you. And what I've done is I have put my seashells mixed in the sand. The sand acts as a buffer and it sort of packs it, and then you don't come home like I did, your seashells will all be intact. In so let's see if I can find my seashells in here. There's one, and look how good that turned out. 
Here's another one. And again, you don't have to worry about them breaking. And look at this beautiful one here that has been preserved. And you can also keep this sand too. You could add this and put it to a jar that you have at home. So this is a great idea and thanks for your tip. And you know, you don't have to bring home 25 seashells. You just might wanna do five or six. And it doesn't even have to be a large container. It can be a small container. And the sand is wonderful. And you not only bring the sand home, you bring the seashells home. <clears throat> so I thought that was wonderful. Also, a lot of people nowadays are making memory jars. What you can do is get a jar, and on this one, I just got a wide mouth mason jar, and I have a lid on it. Because again, whatever you put in here, you don't want to spill it, and you don't want to have to have it cleaned up all over your house. I stuck a picture in for my vacation. I just took a colored picture and I just stuck it here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some sand to it. I'm gonna build it on up and maybe put the seashells where you can see it. If you have like tickets to attractions, like if you went to a museum or you went somewhere else, stick those down in here and just build up your whole jar. And you don't have to put the sand in it. You could just put pictures, you could put the seashells, you could put your tickets from the events, whatever you think of. And like I said, I would just secure it with the lid because you still have those memories and you can set this on your bookshelf or somewhere and you can just glance at everything. And it's not yet put up in a drawer, it's sort of out where you can see it. My last suggestions are get those pictures out of your photo albums or get them out of your books or wherever you keep them. I just made, I'm a, I'm a person that loves scrapbooking. So you can have a whole scrapbook dedicated to one vacation. Uh, my family and I, we went to Savannah. We actually went when it was cold weather. It was pretty warm on the beach and we got to go out, but there wasn't uh, a lot of people there. It was uh, less crowded than if we'd gone like in the bustle time of the summer. But when I came back, I just got some of my photo paper, uh, scrapbook paper, it's got a little print on it. I use the blue and white because it sort of looks like the beach. And I printed a little map of the state of Georgia. And I have Savannah here and I have Dalton up here so you can see how far I traveled. And then I just put some different pictures on there of my Savannah trip. And like I said, you can do your whole book that way. I could make just one book of Savannah or just put all your vacation pictures together. You could have one page of this trip, one page of another. But I like including the mail because it sort of, you know, just jogs your memory of, oh yes, I remember when we traveled and how far was it? And another thing I've done is I've also made another map and I put a picture of one of the lighthouses or the lighthouse that we saw on the beach. And I set this out and uh, it's just sort of things that, you know, brings back memories. Your memories of your vacations are very special to you because there, there are special times you spend with your family. So be creative and get yours out one afternoon and your whole family can work together and assemble some things and put them out where you can see them and not like me sometimes, I just stick them in a drawer. Uh, we'll be right back in just a second and I'm gonna make a great cookie recipe for you. Your family depends on you to be healthy. That is why you depend on Hamilton. Hamilton Diagnostic Center's advanced imaging technology provides superior image quality with reduced radiation exposure. Each image is analyzed by Hamilton's on-site team of specialty radiologists in close correlation with our surgeons, allowing for same-day results. We are here for you. Hamilton Diagnostic Center. Your health is our mission. Have you ever wondered why you cannot achieve a flat tummy like you had when you were a teenager? In spite of exercise, it seems like you're getting nowhere. It could be that you've had children and it's just impossible to achieve without having surgery. With a procedure called an abdominoplasty, we have specialized techniques that can repair the damage that has been done with the pregnancy or the weight loss. We can help you to achieve a flatter, tighter tummy like you had in your younger years. We are this close. We're this close. We are this close. Of all my team to making history. This close to changing the world. We are this close. this close. This close to making sure no child suffers a crippling disease ever again. This close. We are this close to ending polio. To ending polio. All we need is you. Is you. This close. If we don't act now, we may lose this chance forever. Help Rotary make history at endpolionow.org.
Hey, I'm Sandra and welcome back to Cooking and Crafts and I have a fantastic cookie recipe for you. This is my most requested cookie recipe. Number one is because it's easy, you have all the ingredients at home and the cookies really turn out good. So let's go ahead and get started. I have already measured this but I'm going to tell you the amount so you can write it down and you can do this at home. You just need a mixing bowl, you need a wooden spoon, no mixer, nothing like that. This is just liquid um, oil, it's vegetable oil. I use canola oil and you're gonna need two thirds of a cup and put it in your bowl. This is granulated sugar, you know, like the kind of sugar you sweeten your tea with. And this is three fourths of a cup. Really not a whole lot of sugar and this is gonna make about two dozen cookies. Um, when I'm cooking, I sort of like to stir as I go. You don't want to over stir it, but I sort of like to mix the sugar in with the oil. And to me, it just makes life a lot easier and you don't have to worry about mixing five things in at one time. You're going to need two eggs and just large eggs. I like to break my eggs in a separate container and I like to look at it to make sure there's no eggshell. I have gotten a bad egg before and you know it's bad, but if I break it directly in here, it's going to ruin all my other ingredients. But if I break it into this bowl, then I can just throw this away and I haven't ruined my other egg and I haven't ruined my sugar and my oil. So you do need two eggs. I like to sort of get things out of my way so I can have some room. You can also, when I taught school, you can also put your dirty dishes in the sink and it gives you more of a space to cook with. So that's a good tip too. Move them out of your way and if you can, put them in the sink. You can also mix this with a fork, but I sort of like a little wooden spoon and you definitely want to make sure that your egg is all stirred up. <clears throat> You're going to put some vanilla flavoring in and be careful, I always spill my vanilla flavoring. So I like to measure it over another container because you need one teaspoon. Vanilla is not sweet in itself. You have to have the proportion of sugar to go with it. And uh, if you have too much, your cookies, rather than being good, they're gonna be very bitter. Always put your lid back on your ingredients too. And uh, that way I knock them over and then things won't spill into it either. And the last thing that you're gonna add, two cups of self-rising flour. This is self-rising flour. Not plain, not all purpose and you want to mix this in. Um, most of the time now, flour is already pre-sifted. A uh, long time ago when my kids would cook, we would have to take the sifter out and we would have to sift the flour. But no longer is that true. Usually it's okay just to use it right out of the box. Um, also, I have preheated my oven to 350 degrees. And what that means is when I put these cookies in, my oven is already going to be at that temperature and my cookies can start immediately. Um, how cookies actually got started is it was a little test of the dough or the batter to, uh, from a cake to see if the oven was hot enough. You know, ages and ages ago, there was nothing on your stove or nothing on your oven that would say my oven's preheated to 350. They just had to guess and put in more wood. So what they would do is if they were making a cake, they would take little drops of this batter, of the cake batter, put it in a little pan, put it in the oven, and if it cooked, their oven was hot enough for the cake. And that's how cookies got started. And we all love cookies. Okay, I'm going to need a cookie sheet. I just sort of spray it just lightly with some vegetable spray. And I like to sort of put this close together because if I don't, I make a mess. This is called a drop cookie. And the reason these cookies are called stir and drop cookies is you just stir them up and you just drop them on the cookie sheet. And again, when I'm making cookies, I like to put them in rows. Um, that way I can get more on my cookie sheet and uh, I don't have to spend tons and tons of time in the kitchen. I can get them done and then we can start eating them. These cookies are going to rise. They're going to spread out. So you want to leave quite a bit of space in between the cookies 
So when you get them out, they're not just all one big cookie, even though that might not be a bad thing. But if you have people coming over, you know, you're going to have trouble sharing. And try to keep your cookies the same size. If you find that some of them are a little smaller, you can go back and add a little bit more batter to it because it's going to be fine. Now, I'm going to save this batter. I'm going to make another batch. You can have another cookie sheet or wait till this one comes out and you can start another one. You can make your cookies just plain like this. My husband, he likes it when I take the little sugar dispenser and I put some granulated sugar on it. We can do that afterwards, but he tends to like it put on at, before I cook them because it sort of makes it a little crispy at the top. My daughter likes chocolate chips. So what I do on hers is I just put some chocolate chips on the top. I usually, if you want to, if you're going to make everything chocolate chips, <clears throat> you can stir it in the batter. But if you've got people like in my family that some people like one type, some people like the other type, you can just add it onto the top. How can you go wrong with M&Ms? <clears throat> M&Ms are good. You can also put on pecans. You can put on peanuts on the top of them, or to, of course, grind them up. And this would go into your oven. I usually use it on the top rack. And this takes about eight minutes, seven minutes to cook. You want to look at your cookies because everybody's oven is different. Your oven may cook a little bit faster than mine. And you just want them to get golden brown on the bottom. And here are your finished products. Of course, this is my M&Ms. I just actually put some almonds on this one. I have some chocolate chips, and then I have just the sugar cookie. And how you can sort of tell they're done is they get just a little golden brown on the bottom. I don't like my cookie just super, super crispy. I really think this is going to be one of your favorite recipes because it's great. Uh, just keep these in an airtight container after you cook them, and they'll keep for almost a week if you can you know, resist from eating them that long. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope this becomes one of your favorite recipes. And I'll see you back in a minute. And we're going to do some cute arts and crafts. Hi, I'm Johnny Miller at your Western Sizzlin in Udawal, Tennessee and Dalton, Georgia, and I can tell you that infomercials work. We've been advertising monthly to reach our customers for over 17 years now, and I know that you can reach your customers as well. You can depend on Elliott Media to take care of all your advertising needs, and remember, Western Sizzlin, we're your family steakhouse. When you're in the market for a new or scratch and dent appliance, Langford Appliance is the place to come. We're a locally owned business for over 30 years serving this area. Don't let your dollars go out of town. When you buy your appliances from Langford, your money stays right here in Dalton. And you can always count on us for the best service after the sale. We have a large parts and service department for all your appliance repairs or plumbing and hot water needs. Come see us when you're in need of any appliance. That's Langford Appliance at 319 North Glenwood Avenue in Dalton. During a heart attack, every second is important. Hamilton Medical Center has invested even more into advanced cardiovascular technology and medical expertise with more outpatient and emergency cardiac capabilities than have ever been offered, all just minutes away from home. That is why more people follow their hearts to Hamilton Medical Center. We're here for you. Hamilton Medical Center, your help is our mission. Have you ever heard the term, your eyes are your expressions, the windows to your soul? But when your eyelids look tired and they start to sag, it will make you look much older than you actually are. There is a simple surgical procedure called a blepharoplasty or eyelid tuck, which can help to rejuvenate and redefine the contours around your eyelids. 
It will even improve your fields of vision and a portion may even be covered by insurance. We can help redefine how others see you. Hey, I'm Sandra and welcome back to Cooking and Crafts and I have some wonderful crafts for you. You know, arts and crafts are always fun because it's, it's fun for me to see what I have at my house and I know I can take it and come up with something completely different. And anything I show you on the show, be sure to take your twist and add to it. You don't have to do things exactly like I do. You can add an extra step, you can leave out a step. That's one good thing and if yours turns out looking a little differently from mine, that's great. That's what handmade things are supposed to be. There's really no two alike, so that's good. Um, let's go ahead and get started. I have just tons of clothespins at my house, and I'm thinking, what could I do for clothespins? And these are good projects that I've made for school, that you can make for Bible school, that you can make for Girl Scouts. And I just use the old, plain old uh, clothespins, the wooden ones, the ones that are very inexpensive. This was a can that I had that I actually think I got peanuts in. So what I've done is I've used my trusty glue gun, and you can tell from the use year after year of, of the glue gun being stuck to whatever I had it on that I use my glue gun quite a bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue it and adhere it all the way around the can. So I'm going to take my clothespin, you can look at the sides and see if there's one side that looks cute or one side that looks better. On this one, I decided to put the clothespin part down. So, and when you line it up, just sort of make sure that it's even here at the bottom and it's even at the top. And if it's not exactly straight, that's perfectly okay. You know, just get it as straight as you can and then after that, after it sticks, don't worry about it because it'll look great. And then again, I'm putting this up this way. And the good thing about the hot glue gun is that it almost sticks and adheres instantly. So, you know, you, you don't want to tug on it or pull on that for, for probably 10 minutes. But it's almost stuck. Once it goes on there, chances are of you getting it off are pretty slim to none. And I have <clears throat> a little container. I could put ink pens in here, I could put pencils, I could put highlighters, I could put a plant in here. This is just a little plastic metal container and so you're not going to ruin anything and just put you some little dirt in here or put you some artificial flowers. What I'm going to use it for is a, like a little memo pad. I'm going to stick some ink pens and then I'm actually going to open one of my clothes pens and I'm going to write some little things that I need to do, as I call my to-do list. And I can put it all the way around, and it will sit out on my desk or somewhere I can see it, and then I can just take that little note with me if I'm going out the door, and I don't have to uh, hopefully forget things as I'm going on. So hopefully you can make this. Start saving your jars and cans, get your glue gun out. You can buy a whole pack of clothespins at a discount store for just a couple of dollars. And you could paint these if you wanted to. You could put the days of the week on it. You could put family members' names. You could go anything. This would also be a great place to put pictures that you could display those. So get your little cans and get your clothespins and start crafting. Another little thing that I came up with is if you're doing favors for birthday parties or for uh, a table that you're decorating, just get your clothespin, again get your glue gun out, and I just glued some little pom-poms at the top. It makes it festive, it's sort of the colors of the M&Ms, it holds my, my food in place, uh, but then people can open it quickly. Sometimes I've gone and I've gotten favors and they've been tied with a ribbon or a bow, which is absolutely fine, but then nobody can get it out, like the ribbon's tied in a knot. So this one, you just open it, you can get right to your food or to your favors very fast. So that's something that you could make too. This is super easy. This is something I use at my house. I just had some magnetic tape, and if you have to buy some, arts and crafts store, a discount store, it comes in a whole roll, and I think this whole roll is just a couple of dollars. Get your uh, magnet or, and cut it off. This just cuts with a pair of scissors. Put it on the back of your clothespin. I've done here, I've done two. And when I get my laundry out of the uh, washing machine and put it in the dryer, 
I am always missing socks. I don't know where the other match went to this one, and then I don't know where the other match went to this one. They're somewhere at my house. And if you sort of put them in the drawer, you forget about it. So what you can do with this is after you put your magnetic tape on it, put it up on your washing machine, put it on your dryer. And that way it's right there in sight. You haven't put it in a basket. You can find it easily because I'm gonna find the other match to this eventually. It might be a couple of days from now. I'm gonna find the match to this one. Again, it might be a couple of days from now. But then when you find that match, you know where the other one is. And with this magnet being stuck on the back of your clothespin, and you can put it on your washing machine or your dryer, you can match them up instantly. And family members, you can do that too. And uh, you, know, you can find them easier, easier and hopefully no more mismatched socks. So I hope that tip works too. What I also do with clothespins, if you put your garbage liner in the garbage can and it doesn't quite fit, and then you put some article of garbage in there and the whole bag goes in, well, to prevent that, take your bag on the outside of your garbage can, sort of twist it up and secure it with a clothespin. And that way, when you put your garbage in, your garbage bag doesn't fall down. Another thing my family and I use clothespins for is when you go on vacation, I always put you a couple in. If you're in the motel room or the hotel room and at night you close those curtains or those, uh, those draperies, there's always a little gap right in the middle. And if you're especially on the ground floor or even up on the higher floors, you think that people can see right into your room. So what you wanna do is take those drapes, put them together, secure them with a clothespin, you might need a couple, and then you feel like that you and your family in the room, you're a little bit more secure and that way people can't see through your window. So get your clothespins out. I know you have tons at home and start using and making some things and see how creative you can be. This is the last thing I have. I just have a little mason jar. And my daughter from middle school has this whole container and it's full of bracelets. Tons of holidays, whatever. And I wanted to put some knives and forks and spoons in here for an occasion where people were coming over. So to decorate it, I just put her bracelets on the bottom. They're elastic. They just fit right on here. There's no gluing because I might want to take these off later. And there's my jar decorated. And I can, after I use it, I can take these off and I can even put a holiday on there. So get your bracelets out and see what you have. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have gotten some great tips and I will see you next time on Cooking and Crafts. To advertise your business on TV, contact Elliott Media at 706-529-4237.